that noise? Yeah, yeah, I do actually. Because I do have a couple things to say about the episode. Which I do want to get off my chest. I'm dead inside. Everybody and welcome to the review in space. This is another episode. Um, I'm joined with with this guy this time. First um, time on review in space. No, but not the first time on the channel though. Far no, from first it. time on review in space. So. But yeah, um, so we're going to be doing the review of Doc Two, Episode Ten, Series Twelve yeah. uh, of the Timeless Children. We well, asked the episode yeah. name, and um, so I feel like it's important. There will be a full review of Series Twelve coming out on the channel. Like in the summer sometimes, so not immediately. I want to do a proper professional review for retrospective. Retrospect, yeah. Like once I've had time to digest the whole se the whole series, it's just that. So this time last week, I'd 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 watched well, uh, maybe five days ago rather because it was on Saturday. Mm. I watched the Timeless Children and I was myth. And I needed and I, so I've had a week to digest the Timeless Children. I feel like I should do a video where I discuss it um, with the closest Doctor Who fan to me. Yeah, um, literally right opposite. I'm more, <laughs> yeah, I'd so say I'm more of a new Who guy though. Right? Yeah, yeah. So obviously our reactions are very different to the other. That's why it's good to bounce off each other with opinions on this. Yeah. So like this is going to be a bit more informal. We're not going to have like a like a structured review. It's just going to be very much what we thought about. This isn't going to be a review of the episode either. This is going to be a review of what the Timeless Children as an episode did for the yeah. entirety of the show, and if it killed Doctor Who as everybody I, else is I saying. Think it. Anyway, so shall we? We'll talk about the Cybermen first because yeah. that's the least important thing about the I timeless agree. children. I, I had a so, real issue with the way the Cybermen have been in the last few episodes. Yes, I no, I I thoroughly so the so the Mary Shelley episode it retconned the uh, Silver Turk, which I'm very upset about. Those of you who do Big Finish will know what I'm talking about. I hate that, and I'm pretty sure the timeless children has retconned a lot of content from the canon. You know the books and the. It's retconned the Doctor. Well, it's retconned the lot. Yeah, it has actually because because they give him a new regeneration cycle. They probably just yeah. unlocked it. <laughs> yeah, level up. Um, no, genuinely, like that's not ever going to be explained. I don't think. Where the Eleventh Doctor goes, oh, Mister Grumpy was regeneration nine, and then we have eleven and twelve being the vanity issues Doctor, mm. and then thirteen is eleven. So and and it's like no, yes. that's clearly not the case. Oh shit! Hold on. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and, hold on, spoiler alert for all of Doctor Who, Jesus Christ. Mm. So if you guys are still here, then you hopefully you, you will have watched Series 12 of Doctor Who by now. Well, I'm um, sure we'll be back on that in a few years. Yeah, like the next showrunner will be like, right, let's, let's fix like, the issues that Chris Chibnall like wrote Gallifrey, in. Gallifrey, you know, that, that's always going to be Gallifrey's going to come back, just like it did after the Time War and all this shit. So, yeah, you know. Before the Time War, then Russell Davis destroyed it. Moffat brought it back. Chibnall's destroyed it again. It's like if that's the thing though about so, so destroying Gallifrey. It's like we. It's, it feels like we've just got it back and then it's mm. gone again. It's like oh for fuck's sake. We just we had like one episode on Gallifrey where it wasn't burnt to the ground, yeah. and that was hell bent. So <laughs> not exactly the best episode to have Gallifrey. You know in the in the mix. Yeah. Um, I do have to say so the episode Timeless Children as a whole. I really enjoyed the direction. Um, Sasha Dewan is, I, he, it's too early to say, but he's nearly as good as Sim, not quite as good as Delgado, 
but he is like my third favourite. But he's living up to Sim and Roger Delgado though. Yeah. But I'd have to say and Michelle Sasha, Sasha Michelle Gomez, yes. Yeah, such a good actress. Really underrated. Um But no, Sasha Dewan is fucking superb. Mm. Honestly, he is vicious and evil and malicious and just so frantic and sporadic. Just yeah. like he, he gives me the vibes of Sim, but like he, he he's how I picture um, he gives me the master words. to be played if, it, yeah. if if the master was played by like Matt Smith or something. Yeah, he reminds like, me of Sim, like how Sim is in the end of time, where he's a bit more like. Batman. Yeah, very very. No, like, like, he's because Sim is a lot more reserved after they get rid of his drumming in his head or whatever. Yeah. In um, what's it called in the uh, World Enough and Time, Doctor Falls yeah. episode of Capaldi. Um, but anyway, so <laughs> we're getting yeah. sidetracked a lot here. So Cybermen, Mary Shelley episode, good, really good actually, really enjoyed. Very very Tom Baker vibes, I... like that sort of. Era yeah. of Doctor Who, but big vibes from that. Um, I enjoyed it a lot, mainly because I just like all the writers that were in it. Yeah, and then we have uh, Ascension of the Cybermen. Mm. We're only talking about that because it's like the lead up to Timeless yeah. Children. I love Ascension of the Cybermen. As a, as a standalone episode, it's nearly flawless as a Doctor Who episode. And speaking of which, I love the cliffhanger. Absolutely adore the cliffhanger from Ascension of the Cybermen to uh, the oh. Timeless Children. Because you have the companion being chased by a fleet of Cybermen on the cyber ship. Meanwhile, you see a burnt Gallifrey to the ground, even though it's a very controversial thing to write in. Chibnall, thanks. And then you have Sasha Dewan fly through the portal, and he's like, Everything is about to change. And he's, oh, I, I just love that. It's like, it's like the perfect cliffhanger for the finale. He's, he, oh, it's, oh, it's such a good cliffhanger. Everything is there. Mm. Perfect cliffhanger. Well done, Chibnall. You did write a good cliffhanger. Love it. Yeah, I love it. He, he can be it's a good like it gives, That sort of shit gives me some vibes from um, uh, Stolen Earth Journey's End episode. Because mm. you have Sarah Jane about to be shot out by Daleks. You have the Tenth Doctor regenerating. You have... What other stuff happened in that episode? A lot, basically. Mm. The cliffhanger has everything in there. And it's like, what the fuck? How are they going to get out of this? Yeah. And that same feeling with this episode, cliffhanger. But no, I love the I love the um, the the sort of synopsis of uh, Ascension of the Cybermen, where it's like you have the last remaining humans, the last seven humans. You kill one off in the last five in the first five minutes, and then the rest of them are on the run for however however long. And yeah, and I genuinely I, I was saying this to you when I was watching it. Um, like, I felt genuinely like Graham and Yaz could die here when they were on the ship stranded yeah. with the humans and the Doctor wasn't with them. I thought, this is a genuine point where they could probably die. Like Yeah, and that would... I would really appreciate that because I always... There are two things I judge a Doctor by, mm. which is how they react to their first Dalek. And the Cybermen as well, preferably. And the Master. But I think the yeah. thing is, is that it's Dalek, Cyber, Daleks, Master, Cybermen. That's, yeah. that's the order. Well, I, 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 I look at how they react to a Dalek and then I look at how they react to a companion dying if they have a companion that dies at some point. Yeah, but so yeah, like, a lot of I doctors really, haven't had that, which is No, a not a lot of them have, but like because that is now more of a possibility because of, you know, what war, when Rory died for a bit. Oh, yeah. no, he died again. They actually he did died. die permanently afterwards, didn't they? Because yeah. the angels in Manhattan. Yeah, that completely broke the 11th Doctor. Yeah, and then... Oh, God, yeah. Um... Well, Clara didn't die, but... Oh, shut up about Clara. Um, don't, don't speak her name. Bill... Bill was really good. Oh, Bill! Bill, oh, uh, Bill was done kind of well. I do I don't, like the I don't, to Bill in the Ascension of the Cybermen. I, I quite liked that. Yeah, I did like that. Like, but Bill technically life. didn't die. She became like a like a water yeah. god or whatever. She became a water girl. She had a hole in her chest. She died for a period of time. She was deceased. Dead. She was dead. She was a Cyberman. She was converted. I love that storyline until they did the whole Heather thing at the end. And anyway, it's a different episode. Um, so Ascension of the Cybermen, love it. I love mm. this. Uh, that this. I think Ascension of the Cybermen is. My favourite of series twelve, mm. maybe J Fugitive of the Jadoon, maybe slightly higher, but they're I kind really of like Fugitive. Ascension of the Cybermen, J J uh, Fugitive of the Jadoon, kind of. I don't know which is better than which. I feel like the only reason why I view the Fugitive of the Jadoon so high is because of the whole roof stuff. You got roof. You got like old like Russell T Davis stuff coming back. I suppose. Yeah, Cap yeah, Captain Jack and the Jadoon. Jadoon. But I feel like, I feel like the only re. I feel like it's only. I feel that that episode is pure nostalgia. And though. it's set in Gloucester. Yeah. I love Gloucester. Yeah. There's also a lighthouse in there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We watched the lighthouse as a film. Anyway, um, yeah. So yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like, credit to Ascension of the Cybermen. 
I feel like it has a lot more original content in there, whereas Future of the Jadoon, it borrows Captain Jack from previous canon, yeah. borrows the Jadoon, and then it then it writes in a new Doctor. I feel like that's the only reason. It's just shock moments yeah. in the episode, that whereas the most Ascension one. of the Cybermen is what is much more... The synopsis is this. You're, you're gripped from the start. You have... But there's also intertwined with those flashback moments of uh, the Doctor's past. Mm. Uh, Brendan, or whatever you call him. Brendan, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Brendan, everybody. This show's going to be renamed Dr. Brendan. Never say your name. No. <laughs> yeah. But no, I don't... No, no I one don't, would understand it. I, I fucking hope that that isn't the Doctor's name. I doubt it's Brendan. No, I doubt it's Brendan. If it is, I'm going to actually lose my shit. If, if that is actually his name, but, um, I'd lose it. But yeah, on Ascension of the Sidemen, I like it. It's solid as good action. The Sidemen are a viable threat. I just have an issue with how the Sidemen are represented in the fact that... No, they're just robots. They are just robots. And, that's, and, and, and mind that's you, the Master I, says that in Time That's why I love that Master well. so much, because he takes the piss out of the Sidemen. Because yeah. I like the Sidemen, the Sidemen when... They're illogical. But we do have the lone Cyberman who stirs his emotions, which is a cool twist to the Cyberman. We the lone seen Cyberman that is before. like the is like the most perfect like crystallization of what a Cyberman should be, which is the it's, human parts merged person. with machinery. Yeah, it's 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 like in Beautiful. the it's like in the Lumic two part. That's why I loved when, um, when the Doctor notice, yeah. notices is like it would be inevitable anyway yeah. because like humans always want to upgrade themselves, and you know with the Mondasian stuff with yeah. Capaldi, which is my only experience with Mondasian Cybermen. Um, like, I liked that. I liked it when it's like a logical next step up. In this one, they're just robots. It felt that way as well. I do love the design of the new Cybermen. They're a lot less Iron Man-esque. They have the bulky the, headpiece. They, yeah, have, they have... They're a lot more s slim, streamlined. Yeah. And they do have the stylized. spikes on the shoulders. Yeah. I do enjoy the new design. I feel like it's a lovely compromise between the classic look of the helmet and mm. the Lumic eyes, like the teardrop eyes they I have, like and then obviously the 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 the, the weird and futuristic body. Oh no, that's no, no that's, that's the Cyber Masters though. We're talking crests. about the regular yeah. design. Um, yeah. Like I say, the the actual design in Ascension of the Cybermen, perfect compromise between classic Cybermen and new. Yeah, yeah new who Cybermen. Yeah. I love it. I love the new design. I'm so sold with that. Um, that's the best we're gonna get in the new Who canon, I think, for like a Cyberman design. Apart from the, Lu I do enjoy the Lumic ones, but they're like the they're not very Cyberman esque, at least not in comparison to classic Who. Really, I they're do really, very different. I really but, enjoy the one Yeah, design. yeah, um, I do too. I just love the idea of them there, there being human parts underneath there, all mangled and just yeah. Anyway, um, so uh, cut to the chase. Um, rip the band aid off. T the timeless children. Um, so, <laughs> most of my, I have one issue with the concept of it. I have multiple issues with, with just the way Chip Norris writes dialogue. And yeah, I, w I was saying but, this to you actually. Yeah. But yeah, um, he and basically. Once you noticed, know, told me. I just couldn't help but pick no. it up every time they did it. But yeah. um, it's basically an exposition dump. This episode is yeah. m mostly there. Are, there I are do. good moments in there, and Sasha yeah. Demand's acting does make you forget that it's all just exposition. But it really is just exposition. It's just. I feel like they need it to so that the whole so that they can give every every ounce of information of what this new concept is to the viewers. Um, we'll talk about the actual concept itself in a second, but the writing of it is like you need to show, not tell. That's what I was saying to you. You need to show what's happening. You can't just because there was a bit where where thirteen will... was in the the matrix. Sorry, really, quick, I don't mean to interrupt. Mm -hmm. the, where thirteen's in the matrix and he goes, he's like, oh, something is buzzing around me. I'm being shocked. Like, oh, yeah. just show me. Don't. Tell me! Don't yeah. tell me! Oh! A lot of the time how? characters will say <laughs> how they're feeling. Which is, you know, it can be done well, but a lot of the time... Characters will just say... They'll just say what they see, which is really strange. And and it's good, and, and if you have your eyes shut, you can listen to it like it's an audio drama, yeah, and it's great. But, like, but this is a, it's this not a fucking... You need to show us. That's the whole point. If this was a different media format, sure. But no, this is this is this is fucking television, um, like and obviously I, t I told you told you about this in Ascension of the Cybermen. The only time I picked it up in there was when they were on the ship and they yeah. were running out of life support and they were and the ship was buzzing red and shit and they were going life support is draining, the ship is dying, there's rubble everywhere. It's like we know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like shut up and show us cool shit. Yeah. Oh, anyway, sorry. Yeah. Rant over. I, I just feel like it's, there's so much that Chibnall needs to. Like the, the dialogue is so forced at times as well. 
But anyway, sorry. Yeah. I don't mean to interrupt. Go. Sometimes Go acting it. doesn't help either because there's some really weak acting, especially from Whitaker, which is a shame because she can be a good yeah. actor. She is a good she's actor. She's just not as the doctor. She's not in this, yeah. No. Like I but, said, um, I said this to you, only three times in her era I can safely say she acted like the doctor. When she was. But most of it came at the end of this episode, actually. That's no, no, well, okay, so the, the warehouse scene with the Dalek. Yeah. Uh, when she reacted to Ruth being the doctor, that was good. Uh, then um, the other one was in this episode when she was. Uh, confronting the master in the Matrix when she was throwing the master onto the grass or whatever, mm -hmm. onto that mountain, and she was shouting him like, "Show me everything!" or whatever. Yeah. That was very Doctor esque, where she lost it, you know. Yeah, my underlying issue but... with what the Times Children does anyway. is like, I don't really care about retconning things because when you because I read a lot of comics and every time you read a comic and something is changed in the character. The odds are within five years I'll change it back or change it to something different. Yeah. So I don't really feel that the show's been ruined by this. My issue is the fact that, like, I don't like the fact that the Doctor is so unique and special now. I like yeah. I like the idea of the Doctor just being... He's just a like, run-of-the-mill Time Lord trying like, to get uh, by. Yeah, who is it that says it? Yeah. It's like, I think it's Amy or something that says, like... You're just a mad man with a blue box. And he's and not he's like, he's, like, he's, a he's fucking he's a fucking god. He's the creation of the fucking time lords, time lords. Yeah. He created them now and it oh I feel it's a bit strange. Okay, so here's so I don't need to, I need to word this in the right fans, way, but it's like when they so, say that Naruto was the reincarnation of like basically ninja Jesus. <laughs> no, okay, so how do I how did I word this earlier? I so Okay, I'm going to say this first. So, Doctor Who, at least for me, the most special part of Doctor Who is the event where it's revealed who the next Doctor will be. So, like, Jodie Whittaker's reveal video where, you know, Hood comes off. Wow, it's a female blonde Doctor. Sure, great. Whoa, crazy, blown away. And when they revealed all these other Doctors on, like, a live show, it's like, and this next Doctor for a whole new generation is... Peter, Peter Cabaldi! And all this. And it... I feel like, considering there's a plethora of... Other incarnations of the Doctor... Well, not necessarily... We'll talk about that in a second, the whole term Doctor later, but um, one thing at a time. Uh, the fact that there's now a plethora of of Doctors that probably include the Morbius Doctors now, mm. um, it, it, just, it just devalues what we know about the Doctor because we know fuck all now, because we don't know where that portal leads as to where the timeless child, i.e. the Doctor, came from. We don't know hardly any of the regenerations that the Doctor has been anymore. We know 14, if if that, right? Yeah. We know, yeah, 14, right? Yeah, Four no, 15, because Ruth. We probably know 15 official incarnations. Yeah. As long as you don't include all of those children that we see in the weird exposition flashback thing. But that's like... Mm. <sighs> so... And we don't know them, though. We just see them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. And, um... Um, and like, and like, and like Jody said, how how much was missing between between that youngster black doctor and Hartnell? Because yeah. that's that that's where it goes dark, isn't it? Where mm. it's like, what have you done? Is that? And then the master goes, that was that was gone way before I I found it, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. And and when they were looking through the matrix through the doctor's maybe past, that, right? So I feel like maybe that Brendan thing when they wipe his memory, that would be. Them forcing him to go, forcing the doctor to become a child again, and then that child is Hartnell. Yeah, um, maybe. maybe. I don't know. No, no, I feel like that makes sense. I just, um, I just feel like where does the roof doctor fit in then? Also, my thing is, how do they, how do they impose the limit on the doctor since the doctor couldn't actually be during infinite times? So and I was speaking to. And then how do so they? Do they just they just like unlock it again for? Another so thirteen, but no, that's the thing though. Why? Why did the so the Doctor has unlimited regenerations now? Supposedly, at least that's that's what we're led to believe. I do with appreciate this that because because no. you know who knows in like twenty years they might have to justify another thirteen regenerations if it even goes that long. No, but listen. So, so I was speaking to my mum earlier, and she's a lifelong Doctor Who fan. Yeah. She's grew up with that shit. Yeah. And she was saying that now that this has happened, you can't be afraid for the Doctor's life anymore. Because no matter what, the Doctor will regenerate. And there is a limitless... Like, indefinitely, the Doctor is a constant in the universe. That's how it's brought up in this episode. Mm. The Doctor is the timeless child. The Doctor can't die. The Doctor is immune to time. That's, yeah. what the, that's what this episode is conveying here. And it basically means that the Doctor, no matter what, will live on. 
Yeah. And and we knew that already, otherwise the main the, otherwise this but we still want to feel like the main character's under threat. You know yeah, what I mean? We need tension. And ha removing that kind of removes the connection to the doctor because the doctor is immortal yeah. and we aren't. And that removes the connection, the viewer protagonist connection that you're meant to have in like a series or a sh or like a film. Um what else was I going to say? So, um, as well as that, um, I we're not going to talk about Future Tibble of the Dune too in-depthly. We're going to do that in a separate Series 12 review. I love the Roof Doctor. I want her to be a part of the official numbering of, of the Doctors, like Hurt was. Um, but where does she fit in? Mm. And we don't know, because there's this big fucking gap, but it also may not even be a gap. It may just be... The doctor what being their mind being wiped and suddenly now he's now he's Hartnell as a child again and they yeah. then Hartnell grows up with the master and then they graduate and the rest is history. We know the rest, right? Yeah. Or, or so we think. Um but um I don't know. And okay, um I hate Jodie's acting. Fam hate it. I hate her acting. I hate it. I That's why? Funny. Why can't why can't just stop saying fam at least. Like, I think, yeah, I mentioned this to you that I appreciate that Chibnall's from the north and he likes to see more representation. Same with Moffat and Scottish people. Yeah. Same with uh, Russell T Davies and Wales. Yeah. But you know, I'm, I I get a bit bored of listening to the same accents over and over again. Yeah, it gets very same. Also because if you hear some of those actors talk in interviews, they do have accents, but they're playing no, they're it up. Strong, yeah, yeah, they play it up for the show. And that makes it all really inauthentic yeah. for me. Well, especially I know Jody. it's like an actor's job, but at the same especially time... Especially Jodie, yeah. Yeah, Jodie Whittaker Ritt really plays it up. Um, but, um, um... It's just... I don't know. There's something oh, about the way Whittaker delivers her lines most of the time. Yeah. I just don't like it. No, no, I don't she like seems, how she delivers her lines either. She always seems like she's out of breath. Yeah. Which is strange. It is, yeah. And like, I know that, like, Ten was guilty of always, yeah. like... Doing like shh and like breathing with like breathing through his teeth a lot. Yeah. And I know oh, that, that and, cool and you know Smith and Smith would always like wiggle and, his hands and arms. Wiggle his hands or like enunciate T's really strangely. And Capaldi. And Jody says fam. And Capaldi so, would like slur his words a little bit. Yeah, no, I love it though. Anyway, um, so. Okay. Oh, here's something I was gonna say that I got really sidetracked of all the fucking timeless child bollocks. So, um, humans in the story have no fucking development. We, yeah. we know fuck all about any of the su human survivors that we see. I don't care about any of them. Especially because no. they're that, that one miserable... And we should have, really, because they're the last fucking humans, and the whole point of at least Ascension of the Cybermen was to keep the last remaining humans alive, right? Mm. And so, <laughs> fucking well, great. they're called the Toclophane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't, honestly. And then, cool. um, Why don't we see some future kind? That'd have been awesome. Yeah, um, that would have been good. Um, also, it's not the end of the human race, because... You know, there's more humans in the universe. Just, oh yeah, that's the out. last colony in this side of the universe, as Jodie says. Yeah. But um, anyway, so I gotta say, there's a big gap between Graham and the others on the cyber ship, and then them suddenly being in the tent or whatever, right? Big gap. That's never explained how they got off the ship. Yeah. Did they it's teleport down? So no, we don't know. <laughs> exactly. So a bit dumb there, but that's that's excusable. Although I do then, like oh that yeah, then, then really Kush Kushamus as well. That guy. Kushamus. I thought he was the Doctor. I While was, I was watching it. I thought he was an older Captain Jack. I felt like a clown watching this episode waiting for Captain Jack to turn up again. Same. I felt like a fucking well, non this is the second time. Like getting to the end of it and not seeing yeah. Captain well, Jack. Well, this is the second time I've watched it. I watched it the day it was aired. Yeah. And then rewatched it. With yeah, I was, I was like a week late while I was watching it. And clearly two weeks late uploading this review. Um, so, Kashamas, I thought he was the Doctor. Especially when he was like... Never seen like that before. Yeah, when it, yeah! Because he says the line when, uh, when the... Portal opens up before um, Sha yeah. Sasha Duan shows up. Um, they see Gallifrey burnt to the ground, and then the guy goes, "I've never seen it like that before." And it's like, yeah. "What? You're meant to be human." That does like... make sense though, because like, if he's helped people cross the boundary, it's natural he's seen it when Gallifrey was like normal looking before the master destroyed it. That's, I don't know. That's such a that's such a far fetched explanation though. It's just I don't know. Oh yeah, and then the Graham and Yaz scene. Was that in Ascension of the Cybermen, or was that in... Um, that must have been... No, that was Timeless Children, because that was when they thought of the idea to hide inside the Cybermen. Yeah. Um, I liked it. I liked it, but I thought that would lead to Graham or Yaz's death. I thought it was written weirdly. 
very weirdly. Because they'd never had a scene before, probably. They yeah, never had a... It felt a bit weird. Like, it would have been a lot better if it was Ryan there, because they've got a better connection. Bond, yeah. I do see what Tom's trying to do, though. He's trying to, like, I don't know. He's trying to connect all the all the companions yeah. together and be like, um, oh yeah, because we hadn't really had a full, we hadn't really had much of a I think much three, of an adventure with uh, thirteen and yeah. uh, and Ryan either. So I think three is too many. Well, that's how they that's how the show started with three. Yeah, but I Barbara, do think, yeah, Ian, but I think it's too Susan. many. Oh no, I agree. But because from a writing standpoint, it's a lot to juggle. It is a lot to juggle. Um, Hen- hence, why Jodie's Doctor went s- got thrown right to the back burner in series eleven. You got barely any good scenes of her because they were juggling three companions as well. So dumb. But, um, um, I had a really weird. I had an issue with the way that scene was written because it was clearly not forced. meant to be Yaz. No. It was so obviously going to be for like Ryan or something. Yeah. Because Ryan actually has something to overcome with his dyspraxia yeah. and his nerve and his like anxiety and all yeah. that. Yeah. Yaz doesn't really have to overcome anything. No. But um, also just it's phrased so strangely. Yeah. Where he's like, oh, I don't know if I've offended you or something. Like that makes no sense to say that. Yeah. Um. I hate the whole, like, oh, you're not such a bad human thing. It was very weird. Very forced. Very forced humour. Very, mm, Felt a bit off, that scene. I feel like it would have paid off, that scene, if, like, Yaz sacrificed herself instead of Kashamas or whatever. It would have made sense if Yaz had actually done something to warrant Or, kind of or Graham. But, but more, I feel like Yaz, it would make sense more for her character if she did it. But, um, yeah, it yeah. can make sense for Graham as well, though, because he's so scared of dying of cancer. Maybe he's like, he want, if he does, if he is going to die, which he doesn't know, he, could he die, wants to like, do, be like, die a hero or something like that. You know, like, be a good what was his wife's name? Grace, yeah. For Grace or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, uh, but like Bradley Walsh said that he's done all he can with the character of Graham, so we might be losing him in series 13. We are, yeah, he's not on the cast. Oh, he's completely gone forever. Oh, blimey, okay. And then uh, Yaz, same story, isn't it? Well, no, yeah. she fell out. The actress of her fell out with a couple of people on set, apparently. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know about that. I don't really look into stuff no, like that. No. Um, I try not to because it bogs me down. But you know, I, I see it I, on Twitter. I'll be mentioned. I just don't look into yeah. it. It just doesn't really concern me or interest no. me at all. But, <sighs> but yeah, in um, that case, maybe Captain Jack. I don't think Captain Jack fits as a, as a full time companion though. But I do want him back. Hundred well, percent. Like like yeah. It would be good to have him in like a crossover story, like they did for Empty Child, Doctor Dances, to Boomtown Bad Wolf, then to the um, Dalek Two Parter with Eccleston. The you know the back half of the Eccleston series. Yeah. They had Captain Jack there for the last five episodes, which I liked a lot. And then you have Torchwood crossing over with Doctor. And then we have Adam. <laughs> no, no, we don't. Talk about Adam. Season one of. Torchwood ends with the start of the Doctor Who episode where Captain Jack comes back. Yeah. Because he's finding the Doctor and then. Doctor. He clings yeah. onto the box or whatever. With the it? hand. It's great. I didn't. I didn't know the hand was a plot point in Torchwood until I rewatched it. I was like, yeah. Oh yeah, that it hand was is so there. good. And it wasn't in the other bits of the show. Torchwood was it? is so good. So Torchwood is so good. We need to review it at some point. We do. Need to Anywho, do um, so. What else do I have to say about this episode? So, the, uh, the, cyber, the cyber Masters. Yeah. I liked the design. I've got to be fair. I didn't like that they were... I didn't like you say. The Cybermen were treated so poorly. They're not Cybermen. They could literally have been... I think I said this when we were watching it. They can literally have been any, any robot. Doctor Who villain. Any robot villain. Any... Mm. They could have been fucking Zygons. Yeah. It would, have, it would work uh, the exact stretch, same yeah. way. They could have been Zygons. Or they could have been... Well, not Silurians, but like, they could have been I feel literally like it, anything. It, it, it made sense for them to be in Timeless Children because of the essential of the Cybermen leading into it, though, and the whole yeah, last like, humans my, my, in the universe. Yeah, and... but like, my point being, like, making the Cybermen this big bad when, like, you take away the thing about them, which is, like, the horror of the Cybermen. Like, which existing. is human organs merged into machinery. Yeah, yeah the Cybermen are so creepy. essentially horror characters. Yeah, like, like, like the Borg in Star Trek. The Borg scared me so much like as the a Borg, kid. Yeah. It's, it's so fucking creepy. But they don't. They they lose all. Especially of that, the, and they just become robots that kill. Especially the lone Cyberman. If you look at like a picture of the lone Cyberman and stick it next to like a Borg, mm. they look so fucking similar. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but it could have literally been any any villain yeah. for essentially the Cybermen. It could have been like the humans fighting against. I don't know. Daleks. Daleks. Yeah. Um, but maybe even Zygons because the Zygons are on Earth, right? Or at least they were in. What happened with that, by the way? Because the um. Zygon Invasion two-parter with uh, Capaldi, 
the Zygons live in harmony with humans after that finishes, right? Yeah, I'll choose Zygons as an example in the fact that it could have been any villain. It could have been any, but definitely could have been any villain. Like, I feel I can understand that. Could have been Sontarans. Yeah, Sontarans is a good shout actually. It could have been the Sontarans. It made more sense because yeah, they're more sense. like war-driven. They're, they're more, more genocidal than and yeah, and way more bloodthirsty than the Cybermen are. That being said, that. Sontarans with like <laughs> like in like Gallifrey and robes and regeneration would look stupid. Oh no, I'd be great though. Let's be fair. It'd be fucking funny, but like, but yeah, I have an issue with the fact that Cybermen are just there. They're not. They're scary. not. They're, they're, they're kind not. of a main focus in the central Cybermen, irrelevant. but they're just robots in that. And then this one, they take a back seat for Sasha Dewan. Mind you, which is good. I love Sasha Dewan. Because he really just takes it over. He, I love how he just takes the piss out of the cyber leader. Where he, it's, like, sorry, yeah. it's not brilliant. It's not unique. Yeah, it's They're sorry. robots. I love him. I love him. Any idiot can himself to a robot. Yeah. Throw a stick in his universe, you'll hit a robot. I used to do that. <laughs> I, li- I liked... And going on... To, and Since we're going talking about Sasha Dewan anyway, I really yeah. like the way he... Plays the master. Yeah. I just have an issue with too. some of the lines he has to say. No, but because I think they're a bit oblique. He says them well and he delivers them. Even and they're good. then. So what was the, the line that we said? Okay, so I so, hate the they're two the, lines the red. Really the red like. I'll roll out. I'll roll out the red carpet and then. Red because it's soaked in the blood of our people. <laughs> I know, but I love it just by how it's delivered. I just think the lines that he's given are like great sometimes. No. Like there's the one where it's he delivers the lines perfectly. It's just how they're written. Yeah, there's a so bit where so panny and so forced. Yeah, there's a bit when... Oh, I can't remember, I should have written it down. Huh. But there's a part where... Um, he's... Um, with the cyber... Lone cyber man. And he shrinks him down and he says that thing where he's like... Oh, I should have said I'll cut you down to size or something. Yeah. And that that was a bit forced, isn't it? I, no, I didn't like... I liked that, but then he was like... Oh, I'm so trigger happy. It's like, do you really need to add... Tribnal will have a character say something and you'll be like... Oh, okay... And then, and then something else that wasn't necessary it was, at the end of the line. And it was like a bit on. Like with yeah. all 55 where it's like, it's global warming, like, cool. And then at the end, the doctor like turns to the camera and goes like, only you can stop global warming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah genuinely. It, it, it was so forced. It wouldn't surprise me if the doctor like met Greta Thunberg in like series 23 <laughs> in 10 years' time. And you know, when, you know when she meets, oh, what's her name? Ada Lovelace or something. Oh. In that in Spyfall, and then like when yeah. she passes out, she gives her this little speech to an unconscious human about like, yeah. "You're amazing. You're gonna do so good and all that." It's stuff. Like, she's not fucking listening. She's <laughs> unconscious. Yeah, she's not alive. So fucking but, funny. She's alive. I mean, she's, like, she's not conscious, but also so it's just like, funny. it's so weird. Yeah, it is weird. Um, but anyway, so uh, timeless children. So we have uh, what? What's her face? Um, the doctor's adopted mother. What was her name again? Uh, Tectoon. Tectoon. So, I think that pretty much confirms that the woman in the end of time that was stood next to Rassilon in that bit where he's pointing the gun was probably Tactoon. Pro- possibly, yeah. like a future incarnation of her. And we said I do that, like that where is Tactoon now in the canon, considering this is like a millennia after the Timeless Child stuff originated with Tactoon. Yeah. But when Tactoon experimented on herself, I pro- she probably didn't give herself the limit of 13 regenerations. No, you wouldn't, would you? No, you wouldn't if you were the one who created that. Well, so logically well, they speaking, didn't create if it, I they stole it from the doctor. Yeah, right. but yeah, no. So I just liked the idea. If if I was to write this show based on what we have right now from the timeless children, I would establish that Taktayun is still alive out there because it's a constant from this episode that they've established. Make that and, it's, and it's something. Yeah, finding Taktayun. Yeah, getting, because the doctor's the rest obviously of gonna. Ob- the doctor's obviously gonna go and hunt whoever can figure out more about the timeless children, mm. timeless child, whatever. Um, the Doctor's definitely going to try to find out as much as possible after... Oh, yeah. Um, she's in space jail. <laughs> the Doctor's in space jail now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so as soon as she, as soon as the Doctor gets out of that, the Doctor's going to want to figure out the timeless child, right? He's, they're going to want to figure out the Doctor's past yeah. before Hartnell. Um, and quickly touching on that again, um, those of you who are angry that... Um, they wrote in a, a plethora of regenerations before Hartnell. I'm there with you. I love Hartnell to the nth degree. And the fact that Hartnell isn't the first Doctor really angers me. To That's something that will never sit right with me, I don't think. Because I love Hartnell. And I always view him as the first ever version of, of, that, of, of our main character of the show. There's no way... And beyond Doctor... 
just person. He's he's always going to be the original that I view. I hate that there's people before him. Mm. Personally, I and I'm there with you. And I know this this review seems very, like not positive, but it's not negative either. It's kind of just objective. Yeah, because, true. but trust me, I am I'm feeling so negatively about this decision that there's doctors before Harnell. Um, but we were saying. I have no feelings about it though. Just to no, because focus. you're because you're not a classic fan. No, I'm not. Um, well, but we were saying that um, just just to try to rationalise it, so I don't stab myself in the eye after this review because of this concept that there's more than just Hartnell. Yeah. Um, the fact that there that the Hartnell is still the first Doctor because that's because Hartnell is the incarnation where hopefully where the Doctor was like, hey, I'm gonna call myself the Doctor as a choice or whatever, you know. The man who makes right. people better. Yeah. Sanctum. So I, I that's that is that's the only thing that's keeping me being like okay I'll I'll behave until we can figure out the rest of the of the, the doctor's past I I'll, I'll behave I won't mm. I won't storm the BBC and and go on a mass shooting <laughs> <laughs> You better watch out BBC if you're watching this hide <laughs> hide yourselves hide your hide your children hide your families I'm gonna murder every single executive in BBC. Mm. I won't, but, you know, I'm tempted to yeah. Overall, I don't mind the episode. No, the episode was okay. It was a lot of exposition. Time. Definitely not the best, not the best of Jodie's. Definitely not the best of Series 12. Not, yeah. e not even the best Gallifrey episode. I'd say that's still Deadly Assassin for me, because I love Deadly Assassin. Anyway, they reference Deadly Assassin in this mm. episode, actually. Sasha Dewan goes, we assassinated presidents here. They, they, so, re they reference Legopolis in Swipeful. Yeah, it's like, did I even apologise for that? No. Good. Mm. Love it. Love it. Anyway, um no, Sasha Dewan is brilliant as the master. And I like that I like that this series has been very they're not shy to reference Classic Who, but I don't like how reckless they've been to retcon whatever they fancy with the timeless child stuff. Yeah. I don't like how, how reckless they've been because they probably retconned hundreds of big finish audios and and past Doctor Adventures and I don't know. I, I just yeah. feel like it's very... A lot of novels, probably. A lot of... That's no, what, yeah, Past they, Doctor Adventures. They have books, don't they? Yeah. No, that's what I mean. PDAs, the Past Doctor Adventures. That's no. what they, they... They basically go back and slot episodes into the era between stories. And they say on the blurb, this story fits between Genesis of the Daleks and Revenge of the Sidemen. You know what I mean? Oh, so, cool. so they do... I feel like they do at least do that in the um, Past Doctor Adventure novels. Um, but yeah. Um... I feel like uh, hundreds of people, thousands, millions of Doctor Who fans will not consider this episode canon. I don't know whether I consider it canon in my head for my own peace of mind yet. I mm. still need time, at least... Why am I looking at my watch? It hasn't got a date on it. I think I need at least a few months to digest this season. Yeah. And then I'll come back with a review of the whole of Series 12... And I'll have my final verdict on how I feel about this concept of there being more than just Hartnell. And then we'll do one for Revolution of the Daleks. I already did a review of Resolution. They did a whole Series 11 review. No, no the new Resolution. Oh, Christmas shit! Res special this year. Is it called Resolution of the Daleks? Revolution. Revol I thought it was Revolution, yeah. Um, yeah, I was about to say we had Resolution last year. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, but yeah. Um, so, I think that's all we have to say. Um, I don't think there's anything else. If there is, I apologise. I my head is still kind of in a daze about this. I'm just thinking yeah. about the things that were most prominent in my head. So. Yeah, the only things that were prominent for me was chipping a weird way of writing dialogue. Yeah. Um, making the Doctor really weird and like like weirdly special and like destined to be important, which I don't like. Yeah. It's why I like the Last Jedi so much because it's like any anyone can be. Yeah. Special. No, I love I love the Last Jedi as well for what it does, and then just go back on. And it this and feels like return. This feels like Rise of Skywalker, where it's like. Sorry about the noise out there. Someone's lugging a suitcase. Yeah, but like, <laughs> I just I don't like it when you make your main character immortal. Well, no, not immortal. even immortal. No, he no, isn't. Not... No, the Doctor's immortal. No, no, not fair. even that. Like, just God the general like. concept of like making your main character like unrelatable as well. Perfect. Yeah. Like, like that's what happens with like. Like, it happened with Naruto. Like, Naruto starts off about a kid who's a shit being a ninja and learns to be a better ninja. And then by the end of the series, which is... Went from, like, a kid trying to be ninjas to just a straight-up war. Like, the last arc is just a him fighting in a war. Yeah. And, like, by that point, they wreck on that he's, like, the reincarnation of, like, the guy who created ninjutsu. Yeah. Anyway. 
So, final note, I will be back with a final verdict on how I feel about this episode. This is just my initial view, like a week after watching it initially, and I've watched it a second yeah, time. Yeah, we just rewatched it. This is like this is like a reaction more than a review. So, yeah. um, just, so like I say, this is not my final opinion. This is just my initial views on it. Like I say, haters out there of Doctor Who who detest this episode, I'm there with you right now. But my final verdict will be at some point, hopefully this year, if I can be bothered to review this episode again. I'll review the whole series 12, and in that, I will give my final opinion on the Timeless Child stuff and whether I consider it canon and whether I consider it good. And from there, we will see where the show takes us. And I'll be back at one point for a torture review. Will you? Will you? No. One day, I'll, I'll come, come back. back. Yes, yes, I shall come back. back. Until then, there must be no regrets, no tears, no anxieties. Just move forward in all your beliefs and prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. Goodbye, viewers. Goodbye, my dears. That was so cheesy. And Allons-y. Allons-y. Well. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. I love it. Perfect. <laughs>